Hello, I'm Scott Soshnick. And I'm Evan Novi Williams, and this is the 211 Points Sports Business Podcast, the Sportacast. All right, I like it because you had to maybe understand that there wasn't a lot of defense in the All Star game for the NBA. There was, all right, I'm, I'm going Yiddish on you. Can we go Yiddish for a minute, Evan? Please, yeah. You, you, you know Kvetch? I know Kvetch, yeah. One there was all, Yiddish words. Oh, wait, wait, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Being the son of Nita Williams, or Nita Novi, Nita of course Novi. you know. Of course you, yeah, yeah, well, sorry. Whoa-oh. Hope she's not listening. Dangerous we, territory there. We do not edit a lot of things out. Uh, please get me right on that one. I don't want to be on the wrong side of Nita Novi. Yeah, uh, yeah there's been a lot of Kvetching um, since the NBA All-Star game. There's no defense. Uh, like Larry Bird was asked, what are you hoping to see? I'm hoping to see, you know, the best of the world, really go at it, whatever. Like, guys. I, I don't understand. I, I really don't understand this. It it just absolutely baffles me. Like, I need to be entertained with these guys going a hundred percent every minute of every day of every. Let let me explain quickly, and then I'll let you take it anywhere you want to go. Let me explain to the masses what is the utility of the NBA All Star Game. It is. Are you ready, folks? It is sort of a thank you. And a party for sponsors. Yep. That's what it is. And I don't think that the executives from all the league sponsors, I don't think they care. They're sitting there courtside or in great seats. They're, they're hanging out at dinners and banquets. I don't think they care if they're not just straight up entertained by being really close to the players while they're dunking, you know, up and down. And LeBron is throwing the ball to himself. That's just a fine party for them. That is what the NBA All-Star Game is for. It is not this made-for-TV, kill-yourselves, you got to play hard, uh, real game that counts. Okay? There we go. Done. Every, you're right. Every year for the All-Star Game, I'm, I think of that, that phrase, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, yeah. shame on me. Yeah. When don't, are don't people watch. going to learn there's it's not so going to be defense? If, you yeah. if, you, if you're watching to try to see the best players in the world compete really hard against each other, that ship sailed 15 years ago, maybe two decades ago. The, the, the NBA All-Star Game is not the thing that a lot of NBA fans want or expect it to be. And at some point, that, that needs to sink in. There is... There's some really interesting things that, that all these leagues are doing around their all-star game, uh, around kind of one-off new kind of integrations or, or, or gimmicks. Some of them work. We can talk about the Steph Curry versus Sabrina Ionescu in the three-point shooting contest. The all-star games for all these leagues, as we continue to say, are going to morph into trying to find fun, maybe one-off, maybe two-off, different formats that work for a number of different fans. You're, you're right, Scott, that, that – primarily the, the these all-star games are for sponsors it's a way to bring clients it's a way to bring employees it is it is a big multi-day celebration in that city i think that the question becomes at some point if viewership continues to drop does at some point that the interest in that disappear I, we're nowhere near that point at, the, at least right now on the ground these things are tremendously successful wherever they go at least so far um, but uh, yeah, we're entering this 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 era where one, yeah, everyone's going to have to iterate, and and two, we're going to see uh, years where they don't have all star games, right? That the NHL is about to have two of them, I think, with the with the four on four, with the with the best on best uh, four nations tournament, and then the and then the Olympics. I think we could see the same thing with Major League Baseball if they play in 2028 in the Olympics. Maybe we get rid of the all star game. I, I think the idea of an annual all star game is is probably going to go by the wayside for some of these leagues. But yeah, I, I'm just sick and tired of. And I thought it was so funny, by the way, that I'm sure you saw the clip of Adam Silver afterwards when he was like, uh, "You scored the most points ever." C congratulations! Like he just looks so <laughs> unimpressed. Way to go, guys! Um, they're just like a very funny, very funny all around. But 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 I I definitely agree with you. Well, this one seems very simple to fix, I, I, and I and I mean that. Do you remember during the COVID lockout lockdown when? ESPN came up with the idea of maybe getting players to participate in a horse competition, but separately. Mm. Like you take yeah. one shot, that one, that, that person. That kind of stuff works so well in basketball. I mean, you could do trick shots. You could do, you know, when the players would play hard, if you asked them to play one on one, first to five. <laughs> You know, they're not going to go crazy. On little one-on-one. One. On yeah. one. <laughs> Trick shots from, like, the, the first row of, you know, of the, of the concourse. Like the McDonald's commercial. What was it? Larry and, and, my, and Michael? Was it Larry and Michael? Hmm. Um, there's knock so many out. things. You could play you, knockout, yeah. Yeah, you could play knockout. There's a million things. And then, by the way, yes, bring in father-son, father-daughter, <laughs> which I would love to see. Um, bring in mascots. 
as if you if you watch the NHL All Star Game, there was quite a bit of the, like the New Jersey Devil and Gritty doing some stuff that was entertaining. Really good bits, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's nothing funnier for the NHL when the when the mascots are out there skating and playing. Like, let, it's almost better than watching the players. There, there's a million fun things you can do, like you said, to iterate. But let the guys go out and have some. Let them just show off the athleticism and have some fun going up and down. Really, you know, it, it's really not that big a deal. Do you really need to have the most compete? I get all Jordan and, and Bird. I want to see them when you have the best together. I want to see them compete. I got it. But the, the, I do understand the guys. You know what? I, I have this now multi-day commitment while everybody else is in the beach somewhere. I, I, I don't want to go all out and, and kill myself before the start of the second half of the season. I, I posed this question in the office to our colleague Lev. If you took, instead of playing the All-Star game, if you took those, that, that collection of, of 25 players and told them, instead of the All-Star game, everyone's going to be inside a gym for three hours. We're going to roll some basketballs out. Everyone's going to be mic'd up. And do whatever you want. Sit there, talk about your kids, talk about strategy, play knockout, play horse, teach each other how to, how to do specific shots, sky hooks, finger rolls, whatever it is. But for three hours, you're in the gym and everything you say is on the record. Do you think player's that's Player's choice. Yeah, total, total player's choice. Don't, don't get um, off the field. I don't, don't say this a lot, Novi Williams. Yeah. I don't say this a lot, Novi Williams. You're a genius. <laughs> I don't say this a lot, Evan. I, I do praise you, but you're a genius. I, I would watch every second of that just Agreed. curious. Yeah, just curious. What are they going to do? What they would play about? harder yeah. for that than they would you know, with, with the lights on because they know what the expectation is to the All-Star game. Yeah, I think, absolutely. Yeah, I, that, I that would be great. get a sense of their personality a little bit. But, but, but yeah, I think you and I are on the same page. The, the, the game itself, the, the leagues that are continually trying to squeeze this into a game – I think are losing the narrative a bit and, and the NHL has gotten away from five on five probably forever at this point. I think that was a very good decision. Um, mm-hmm. But, but yeah, the, the, it, it needs to be more playful because players are making so much money. Now we have such a sense of their personalities already that, that this, this is not treading any new ground of entertainment or, or basketball at this point. Yeah, but I think the NBA scored with Steph Curry versus Sabrina Ionescu. Very smart. You had a and lot that's, of that's bi- exactly what you yeah. and I are talking about, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that, I mean, there was so much pregame leading up to it. Then you had, you know, Sabrina saying, "I'm going to shoot from the NBA three point line," which of course is a little further. And then you had the the broadcasters, you know, Kenny Smith going off on, "No, she should have done it from closer," <laughs> and the, that's just more conversation prom- promoting. Then you had the tangential Under Armour versus Nike yeah. all over Twitter with the, with the ads of, about it, which was like simple and straightforward. It's like all of that is NBA wins, right? It's just more basketball conversation. NBA wins, WNBA wins. How much overlap do you think there is between WNBA and NBA fans? Do you think they're what is largely the... overlapped or do you think they're largely separate? I think they're separate. I think they're fairly separate, too. I wonder if bringing Sabrina in actually widens the audience a bit. If you get some WNBA fans, at least for the one hour of the three-point shooting contest, who decide to watch the NBA All-Star weekend in some capacity that would not have watched otherwise because the star of of that league is in there. Um, So so I I think it was savvy for a few reasons. I think it's just good and better entertainment. I think a lot of people like to see it. But I also think it maybe serves a double purpose of just getting more people into the NBA All-Star Game viewership experience that that would probably otherwise not have if that was Steph versus Damian Lillard. And, of course, the NBA had the LED court at the same time. Which looked great, by the way. Looked really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, again, at a time when I I always go back to focus group of one, what does he want to care about, what's he going to talk about, what's going to intrigue him, what's going to get his attention, Uh, at a time when Adam Silver then announces during Tech Summit NBAI, um, that, that initiative, and... You know, the, the NBA is a, you know, a tech research department, so you can see where this is going. Like, yeah. You could absolutely see where this is going. If you want to capture my kid's attention, um, you absolutely got to hit him, hit him on the phone, hit him with the tech, uh, keep, him, keep him busy. And the game, I'm sorry, I don't care what game it is, even the Super Bowl, just not enough for my son these days. Did, did Jackson watch the NBA AI teaser, the, the, the Spider-Verse uh, AI overlap? I, am I embarrassed as I have no idea? I, I didn't. Na- I did. I didn't ask him. As you know, it was a. It was another weekend full of hockey and driving, and yeah, so and I, some big games. I know that he had a big, he had a big weekend. Oh, uh, how about how about the uh, the division for the uh, for the high school team? Huh? It's longest game in the history of New Jersey hockey. Five New Jersey overtimes. Two one victory over Glen Rock. 
congratulations to the boys. Congratulations to Glen Rock and their goaltender. It was it it was like you know from the goalie battle. It was like a little heavyweight battle, one on one. They were looking at each other down each end, going, "Just miss one. Somebody miss one. <laughs> like they want to go home already." I think of you as fairly posed, com- composed and calm when you're watching yep. Jackson play. For when it's yep. one one through four and a half overtimes, what's what's going through your? Are you nervous? Are you nope, still don't. just sitting there relaxing? Is it? What, it's a weird. I'm your, not. What's, what's I'm not mindset? nervous. No, I'm not nervous. But I do look ahead, and I'm like, oh, losing this now. Like I would just lose. Like lose five nothing. Fine. Like losing this now, and especially there's two things from a, there's two things you need to know from like a goalie parent's perspective. Like, if you're going to lose, make it a two-on-o, rip top shelf bar down. Like, oh, sure. okay. Like, yeah. you know, Patrick Waugh is not no stopping chance. that. I'm sorry. For, for the younger people, Patrick Waugh, the Islanders coach now, he was a good goalie. Um, and, and then there's the just, just don't blow one. Like, don't, no softies, no misplays, no. That is the fear, if that's the right word. Because yeah. the fear is you're just going to blow a chippy. And you're like, oh, God, no. But... You know, luckily that didn't happen for either one. It was just just a hell of a game. And then off to uh, the club team for a state championship in Connecticut. Um, on to regionals next. You know, and I'm so happy. By the way, regionals are in Maine. Thank you very much. Oh, nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. It's kind of regional. Yeah, uh, uh, Connecticut, <laughs> kind of Massachusetts, regional. fine. Oh no, no. This year we got Maine. Wonderful. Yes, so, looking forward to the uh, looking so forward to the draft. Well, well, someday we may see Jackson playing in a in an outdoor NHL game. Uh, but for now, we had to watch the Rangers, the Flyers, the Devils, and the Islanders. Superior this weekend. transition. Superior transition. <laughs> what did um what what did you think of speaking of of of, of really successful. Mid-season things that, that have maybe gone a little stale. What do you think at this point now of NHL outdoor games, the, the, the flair that the Meadowlands did or did not put on uh, th- this week's events? The distinct flavor of each game, I thought, made it successful. There was the jersey. I mean, they leaned in heavily to the Flyers-Devils game being about New Jersey. And that stadium in the skyline of New York, everything is usually branded New York, and you always see the skyline shots. This this was a breath of fresh air, you know, with the governor, um, Max Weinstein from the E Street Band. This was quintessential Jersey from the Rocky Balboa, you know, in Philly dress from the Flyers to the Sopranos sort of dress for the Devils walking in. Um, I thought that, you know, would I have 70 some odd thousand again? Then you went into the Rangers and the Islanders, and you know I grew up an Islanders fan, and I, someone explained to me why they took those late penalties. I, I, I have no idea, but uh, I, I think a success, yeah, a, a successful. You know what? You have to wonder though if you say to Gary, what is the barometer of success here? You had three games, you know, boom, boom, boom on ABC, right? That's that's success. You're on the mothership. You had the, sort of a whole weekend of hockey on the mothership. You had Pretty good games. I mean, obviously the Islanders Rangers game was a was a little bit uh, more exciting when it when it goes to overtime. Um, you had great crowds. You're, you're announcing then you're going to Ohio Stadium next. You got the Blue Jackets and the Red Wings, so you know that's going to do a hundred and something thousand during the weekend. You're announcing the next All Star game is going to UBS Arena and, and the new facility there where the Islanders play. Man, I think if you're Gary, you you've got to be excited and you got to say a fairly successful weekend. Yeah, the, the the I'm sure you saw it. The the, the game winning overtime goal in the Rangers Islanders game, I think also exposed a lot of hockey fans to a rule that they didn't know about, which is that the, the yep. puck can cross the line even if the goal is even if the, yep. is, is off its moorings. If Go, they goalie determine. parents know that rule. Trust yeah, me. Goalie, I mean, yeah, I know you know that rule. Um, uh, yeah, I thought that, that overall, I thought it was a success. I, I want to shout out a, a text message I got from from Matt up in Canada, who's a, an avid listener, who had the same thought that you and I had about the Flyers playing the Devils, which is HBSE versus Comcast. The, the two are fighting over HBSE's downtown arena. Why didn't they should have just said the winner of that game gets its way with the uh, with the arena project in, in, in downtown Philadelphia? That would have made it for uh, for sports business perspective, a very fun, uh, a very fun watch. I would have loved to see. <laughs> Rights to the new facility. Yep, you can build it if you win Devils, and if you don't, you're exactly. stuck in Wells Fargo Center. I mean, but it's a great story. Like we're we, we're going to preview that at some point. We're going to take a peek at it. But think about just sort of the implication there. You have an arena where the Devils um, uh, uh, are are tenant. You know, uh, that's that's not. I mean, the Flyers. I'm sorry, Flyers. Where the, the Flyers are a tenant. Um, it's and owned Sixers, by yeah. Comcast and Sixers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, they, they want a new building. They want a new basketball facility 
downtown. Um, that's, you know, we, we have the real estate components uh, where everybody wants this. You have one side, Harris and Blitzer, billionaires each versus Brian Roberts and Comcast. You know that he wants the status quo because, of course, he doesn't want to lose all these events from the building. What does what does that facility become if you lose the Sixers, right? So uh, fascinating sports business story, and I, I love your idea. It would have been great I'm uh, to, to like, see that. Players like, would have played really hard, I can tell you that. <laughs> well, the funny thing is that like it doesn't – the Sixers getting a new venue doesn't really change, affect the Devils, right? Like oh, it weird... does if your owner's really happy or really unhappy. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's a good yeah, point. Yeah, your yeah, owner I, comes I, in the I, locker room before the game and gives a, a Lombardi-esque speech of, you better win this damn game. It certainly does affect you. No, you're going to be in the Prudential Center either way, but you want your owner very happy with you. I'm picturing those like dumb governor's bets during Final Four. Yeah. Where, like the Washington governor is going to ship a pallet <laughs> of apples. I'll send you chicken. And, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> the LSU, go- the Louisiana governor is shipping beignets up to Washington. Like dumb stuff like that. But this actually has some really, really big uh, – and maybe you get Sixers fans tuning into a to a weekend hockey game because they realize that the, the the potential future of where they go to watch their games is on the line in a in an nhl game just something that you and i can root for on the, on the sidelines that will never happen speaking of and we didn't discuss this but speaking of new facilities and subsidies and now we're triangulating by the way evan i have a i see a oh, good triangle i was that isosceles i, I uh, that see isosceles, yeah. okay good <laughs> I, I see state senator in virginia coming out against the proposed arena in Northern Virginia for the Wizards yeah. and the Caps. I mean, Ted Leonsis has some work to do. Um, just the appetite here for you know more and more. I mean, and it, people always, some people always said it, but more and more, I'm hearing a, an increased drumbeat of wait a minute, these are rich people. Let them build their own buildings. Like you're just hearing it more and more, and you have to wonder, like, what's the leverage for for Ted Leonsis? What's he going to say? I'm going to move my teams. He's going to pick up and take take the Capitals and and the uh, and the Wizards. Well, like, uh, you know, you can like a football team. Yeah, like Stan Kroenke had leverage. I'll move to L.A. <laughs> so yeah. what's the leverage? I'm 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 going to Quebec. Come on. You, I mean, you could almost argue that that Ted is in a position of maybe slightly more leverage because he's straddling borders, and there's theoretically a few different states or jurisdictions that he could set up shop in at some point, but. Yeah, I, I think that the idea of the tide turning, I, I see it. We see it in some places, and then we see what the Buffalo Bills got and what the what, well, except what, what the NFL, the, the Raiders, in, in the Vegas Raiders, the Bills, and, yeah, except, except and in Tennessee, football. Uh, right? Tennessee got hundreds of millions of dollars of public once money again for, for, for football. What doing, yeah. Uh, so yeah, maybe maybe it's maybe that's the distinction to make is that NFL is is a different animal, and then for all these other things, uh, we're, we're going to start seeing people balk at that at, at at that money. Really interesting to see what what does happen with with, with, with Ted. And and I, I know he doesn't really view where they are right now, at least the building they're in right now as a long-term solution. And whether he chooses to stay there or whether he chooses this site without public participation, or maybe it's a bluff by the public. Who knows? There's a lot of possibilities, but definitely a setback for sure for Monumental in its, in its proposal to move across the, uh, across the river into Northern Virginia. I'm so old. I was at opening night of that arena. Um, <laughs> ready for a good transition? You, you, yeah, you were talking sure. about balking. Uh, how about maybe Vegas balking at the A's coming to town? Like this may not come together. So that's my transition to baseball pitchers and catchers. Here we are. I think we get a warming trend coming. Uh, and one of the things we're hearing early on already is that players are not happy with the New Jersey's really unhappy it's, it's, it seems like which I, unless it's uncomfortable i don't get the way they look for this the, uh, people well, hate you you know every, comfort, yeah uh, yeah i mean that's like that's the argument to me i get it which of course i hope everybody's minds goes to george costanza you know talking about the <laughs> cotton and cotton yeah it's breathable <laughs> and i hope everybody goes there but if it's uncomfortable i got it you you want to i i've said this about our hockey team we have these you know the hockey sweaters are the heavy jersey they could have called sweaters and part of the tradition they're heavy heavy but most practice jerseys are the really light mesh, I always preferred to wear the really light mesh. It's like mm. game day, you put on the heavy jersey. Like, why am I wearing this? I feel like I got a wet blanket on top of me. Let me wear the mesh. I'll be more comfortable. I'll be faster on the ice. Anyway, well, that, that, that was that just, that was just a little... Uh, <laughs> may have been part of the thing personal. here. I'll, I'll give the background. The, the, the MLB on-field jerseys uh, are, are, are Nike 
product theoretically. They, they have the Nike logo on them. It dates back to a deal five or six years ago, maybe even more. A, a big deal when Under Armour was going to get the jerseys and then decided not to, and Nike swooped in. Um, there is a third part of that. Nike triangle. swooshed in. They didn't swoop. They swooshed, they swooshed in. in. The, the the third company involved here is of course Fanatics. Fanatics manufactures <laughs> the jerseys, and this is something. This is a relationship that Fanatics and Nike have in, in a few places. They do the same thing with the NFL. They do the same for a lot of colleges. They do some overseas with a few teams, a baseball team in Japan, for example. The, the thinking there being that that Fanatics has a, a lot of manufacturing and speed capabilities, and Nike would prefer not to have to do that. Nike is a lot of really overhead good if you have to have those factors. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. So Nike's outsource it with the partners a lot easier. And really good at marketing. So yep. the thinking was you let Nike do the theoretically the design and the marketing, let Fanatics handle all the back end stuff. They create the jerseys, they sew the Nike logo onto the uniform. And and that is kind of the three way partnership that exists right now for these jerseys. And and Nike and Fanatics and, and we should stress that at least I don't know yet. Who made these decisions? Who's responsible for the changes? But there was a change in the official jerseys that were given to players for on-field playing. And players are very unhappy about them. They're upset about the way they feel. They're upset about the way they fit. They're All right, let's use the right word. Hold way. on. I don't like very yeah. upset. Let, let's, let's choose the right word. What, what are players? Uh, let's go tears. Are they <laughs> miffed? Are they peeved? Or are they irate? I, I think maybe between peeved and irate seems to be the oh, thing. Oh, so that's pretty. So what's what's it, what's the proper word? What's between peeved and irate? They're what? What's if you're not quite a? Incensed. They are incensed, incensed and irate. Okay, I'll give you incensed. I like it. Uh, I don't know if it's right, but I like the fact you came up with anything. Good for you. One of the things that, that a lot of players have talked about is that apparently previously, especially for the pants, there was a number of tailored options. So if you were a player with a pitcher with big legs or thick thighs or a big butt, whatever it is, there were options to tailor your pants to fit you better. And, and you've seen, Scott, there are players that prefer really tight pants. There's play, like Fernando Tatis. There's players that prefer the baggy look. There's a lot, there was a lot of customization that has apparently gone right now as well. You would, you would think you'd want your players to become as comfortable as they could be, yes. Yes. Um, one so size does not indeed fit all. The big question now, I think, is it, one – does it get fixed? Does it get changed? I assume Nike and Fanatics will do oh, something. Oh, this, will, this is going to be changed. Bef- yeah, oh, absolutely. This will be changed quickly. And then the second thing is, is, is does, does this kerfuffle have any long-term impact? Uh, not on Nike, I don't think, because of Nike is Nike and it's a $60 billion company. Does it have an impact on Fanatics and its role here, given just how, how wide and we, how We have how some precedent Fanatics here, Evan. Here? We yep. have some precedent here. Remember when the NBA tried the new ball? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, there you go. And it just went back it was, to the old ball, right? It, it, it didn't matter. As soon as some sort of critical mass of players, and for some reason, I, I think the person who turned the tide, like the, the straw that broke the camel's back, was Steve Nash. I don't know mm-hmm. why. Maybe I don't remember if he was the MVP at this point or not. But Nash came out and said, like, it's cutting my fingertips. It doesn't feel right. As soon as Steve Nash, I think and Steve was viewed as a very level-headed guy, as soon as, Steve, as soon as Steve came out and said, this is terrible, I don't like it, it was like, all right, stop production, we're going back to the old ball. And I'm not sure who that person is in Major League Baseball. Like when Aaron Judge comes out and says, I, you know what, I, I, I just don't like this, it doesn't feel right, you watch how fast this gets changed. There is a lot of frustration among fans about the type and quality of, of fan jerseys that yeah. now gets sold in, in the modern economy. Again, a lot of this is done by is done by fanatics. I think there's a lot of fans in the past week or so who are looking at the way baseball players are complaining about their uniforms and going, see, see I we, told we've, you been, so. we've been yeah. saying this yeah. for years. This is, yeah. this is how I feel sometimes when I, when I order a jersey and I, and I look at the quality of the thing that I get. So, so we'll see. Yeah, I, I agree that I, this will be fixed for the players very quickly. I think the bigger question is kind of w- what kind of longer term, if any, industry effects does this have on, on a company that is is the dominant obviously force in 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 apparel and and fan facing merchandise and is increasingly getting its way into the, the stuff that players wear on the field as well and you and i both know michael rubin very well of course the founder of the company yeah. michael is very vociferous about customer satisfaction hmm. when he hears about an unhappy customer he takes action like we see it publicly uh, my guess will be he will he will uh Step in rather quickly and say, let's make this right More for not only the professionals, but, but the customers as well. Yeah, we'll for sure. follow. And, and by the way, merch, not the biggest piece of the pie when it comes to revenue. But, you know, it, 
it's it's a very public facing one. You're sm- are you smiling at my segue? I'm smiling at your segue. I know exactly. Oh, what okay, you're doing good. Here and I love you, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, because Bre- Brendan Coffey gave us a look uh, this past week. It's sort of how do teams and leagues make money? And maybe Kurt people know, but look, not Brendan. Oh, I'm sorry. Although Why did I Brendan say coffee rights? Yeah. All right. So Kurt Bodenhausen. Sorry, I should have assumed it was Kurt Bodenhausen. So Kurt gave us this look. It's a sort of he does all our valuations, and then of course much of that is the revenue that you generate. So how do these leagues make money? And lots of people read it. It's really sometimes these primers like people forget. It's a good idea to take a step back and say, okay, what's the process by which these leagues and teams operate? Uh, is there a difference between one and the other? Uh, I, I mean, I will tell you to look at your media component, obviously. Say, how do these teams make money? It's different league by league. You, we had a great graphic. I know you were a big fan of, the, of Lev's graphic yeah. that clearly showed Major League Baseball with a big piece of the carrot for local television revenue. And you're like, there's your RSN issue right there. You know, there's your X marks the spot. So what was your big takeaway? Uh, and I know you know this stuff like the back of your hand, uh, as do I. But what was your big takeaway from Kurtz? How do leagues and teams make money? I, I think for, for for general sports fans, this is one of the best pieces that we've published at Sportico. I, I think that the, the the you can learn so much about the way – not only your league and, and your favorite team operate, but how that compares to others by reading this story. The, 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 all sports leagues and teams make money in three main ways. That, that's not a secret. It's media, it's ticket sales, and it's sponsorships. But every league has its own kind of specifics and flair depending on how they share that sometimes, how many games there are in the schedule, how big your national TV deals are, etc. And th- there's a really good graphic, you, you, you mentioned it, which Lev did using Kurt's data about just pie charts of, of the f- the, f- the five major leagues. And we talk a lot about, Scott, the, the, how they compare money-wise, right? The NFL is the king, $19 billion of revenue. Then the NBA is at 11. Baseball's right around 11 as well. NHL at seven, MLS around two. We don't talk as much about how that revenue is, dist- how, how, the, the distribution of that revenue, how it comes in. And that informs a lot about how we think about them in the future. And, and one of the big things that jumped out, as you mentioned, if you look at all these, all these leagues for local, uh, local media rights. MLS has none. It's it's tied into the Apple deal. NFL essentially has none because all their TV yep. deals are local. The the uh, local media makes up about thirteen percent of the NBA, twelve percent of the NHL's revenue. It's twenty three percent for baseball. It's it's twice as big as the NHL or NBA. That NBA number will go down significantly with the new TV deal as well. Um, n- no league is more susceptible to what's happening right now with the RSN collapses than Major League Baseball. Um, so, so, so that's one that, one that jumps out to me when you look at gate revenue to ticket sales, for example, um, it, NHL, it's, a baby. Sm- it's a small piece of the NFL's business, right? It's 17% of NHL revenue. You go to the NHL, um, it, it's, it's a lot bigger. Uh, it, it, it's 46% for the, for the NHL or 44%, sorry, rather the, the, the biggest of the, 44 the major five greater leagues. than 17, yeah, greater. 44 is greater. Um, and, and then all the other leagues are, 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 are somewhere in the middle. So just but it affects everything. Chart, Evan, I mean, yeah. I mean, it affects everything. I mean, if you look at like the Dallas Cowboys, the NFL rules in terms of your local revenue and your stadium and your club seating and your, and your luxury suites, it, it actually impacts if I'm building a new facility from one league or the other, for me, in the NFL, I'm shrinking it, I'm making it premium, I'm making it sweets, because I keep that myself. I don't share that money. I would have a stadium with four seats, <laughs> 500 clubs and lounges and four seats, so I could keep all my money. That would be the way like Al Davis would have done it, and certainly the way Jerry Jones looks at things. I, I was joking with Kurt that the, the companion, way harder companion piece to this story is the revenue sharing story is, is yeah. how each league shares its revenue. And, and for leagues like the NFL, as you just mentioned, it's quite simple. It's, it's, it's fairly easy. It's a set of a set amount of ticket uh, percentage. It's, 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 the, it's the national media deals. It's a few other na- it's league-wide sponsorships, et cetera. There, there's a very set cut and dry. Everybody gets the same amount. Um, and then you go to uh, you go to other leagues, and it's quite different, and 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 tiered by how how big your market is, how much money you're making, et cetera, depending on the league. Um, and then in MLS, right, there's there's really no revenue sharing because the league is still essentially unprofitable, and there's a, a special assessment uh, called a capital call, whatever you want, for MLS owners every year to help fully balance the books. But but yeah, the the, the, the this story is a great primer. For, for a fan of any league or a fan of multiple leagues who really wants to understand the, 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 the different drivers behind uh, w- what works for their, for their leagues, what, what works for their teams, et cetera. 
You could really glean something about people if you listen. If you just listen and have sort of a broad-based knowledge. If I didn't know you and I had just heard that last 20-second riff, I'd have been like, this guy either currently or has in the past lived in a co-op building and he's been on the board. Because you, were, you, you're, you, you, you gave away that your your whole facial you expression know, changed. When, when <laughs> no, I mean I know, I know, but when you said you know assessment or capital call, you were just, your your face kind of sh- just gave it away that you're like, oh, I've been hit with this bill before. Yeah, the, high, the yeah. hives yeah. on my back are just exploding yeah. right now. Yeah. Oh, oh look, we you know we have to repoint the bricks, and everybody share comes to you know. Oh after, you could, you could see it. So you, if you just listen, but you mentioned all right, let's close it up. You heard about you talked about MLS. Yeah. Uh, season starts. Let's see. Today's Monday. We're recording this will come out tuesday season starts tomorrow <laughs> um and I, I love i think this is great that we have real salt lake uh playing inter miami it tells me that match up there is the perfect the perfect way to start it tells me everything i need to know about this league in that i've got of course uh leo messi's team this is sort of like everybody's looking at it it's the big revenue generator it's it's the star power okay great it's got a little bit of everything you have the the owners were like the former great player david beckham got a great deal now he's part owner with jorge mas great and i've also got a team now where david blitzer got a great deal it was like two million bucks but the sophisticated owner is coming in to take this league to new heights i i see everything i need to know in real salt lake versus inter miami so far, the the Messi experiment has been financially fantastic for Major yeah. League Soccer. The league sent over some numbers. I'll, I'll read off a few right here. Um, in terms of this year versus last year, season tickets across the league up 15%. Sponsorship up 15% at the club level, 17% at the league level. Um, dig- MLS.com, their website, MLSsoccer.com, traffic is up 140%, so more than doubled. <laughs> there are four teams worth over a billion dollars, according to our colleague Kurt and Sportico's rankings. There's, there's a whole lot of things you can point to so far about the Messi experiment. There is a big question mark hanging over that. I think heading into the season um, about how much he's going to pe- play and play. It, it's been a hot topic during the, during the off season. And I will put very little weight on how much Messi plays in the off season as an indication of how much he's going to play during the regular season. But that is a big question um, both on the road and at home. Does he stay in MLS through, through his contract? Does he stay even further than his contract? I won't go on my rant, Scott, about how 2027 is going to be the put up or shut up year for major <laughs> league. Defining Center. year. Yep. But, yep. but, but this, it, it, the, I, so much I think of what happens in this league right now is going to, for better or worse, depend on how the messy experiment continues. But so far, uh, so good for everyone in the league, in, in, including, I think, Miami, which obviously has to foot the, the, the large percentage of the bill for bringing Leo here. Yeah, they have to pay, the guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, have to to pay, pay the, the guy, guy. exactly. But I think on the whole, so far, I, I don't think there's a way to look at this in any other way other than Messi's first half season in the league was a huge success, and the business metrics of the league are showing that uh, for sure. Well, I will end it with this. I can tell you that multiple people have approached me in different cities and said, can you help me get tickets for Inter-Miami at insert city here? So uh, people still want to see this phenomena when it comes to town. That is a very good sign because uh, they're going to sample other people. And by the way, what about some transfers and selling players? And, you know, that's that's also going up for MLS. So. Um, like I said, I know you in 2027. I've I've heard that speech. So yeah. let's let's, <laughs> I won't let's do see. What I, th- I think you're gonna have. No, I think you're gonna have. You know, all the indicators will be up once again. We'll, we'll be green, not red, after the season. Um, but we'll we'll really find out in the years after that. And, and the last thing on that messy thing about about people reaching out that if he does play just his contract, there's cities where he's only gonna play once. Right in, in two and a half years in Major League Soccer, he's he's only gonna play in that visiting stadium one time. So, so there is some urgency, I think, for fans around the league. The idea of wanting to see Messi when he comes, uh, you might not get another opportunity if you miss if you miss the first one. So, All right, sports lesson for fans. There. Sports lesson for fans now. How much of what you just said do you think Inter Miami and Leo himself will take into account when he goes to that city and says, "Should I play tonight or not?" 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Zero. I, oh, that's how a triangle. That's a circle. Uh, yeah. That's, oh, yeah. That's, that's, circulation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, I'm not doing the heart. I'm doing Zippo. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that the business of sports did not get ignored once again at the end of this podcast. Close it out. Exactly. He is Scott Soshnick. You can find him. I got the sniffles, by the way. Can you hear? Do I sound Twitter. different? Uh-oh. Do I sound different? I'm you just going to be in the office tomorrow, Scott. We'll see. No, I'm, no I have to be. I have to be. Okay. Right. Uh, I am Evan Novi Williams. You can find me on Twitter right, at Novi right into the microphone. Williams. Hope everybody had a good long weekend. Uh, Aaron Greenewald produces the show. Thank you very much to Aaron. Sportico's digital media it. editor, Cora Bellman. Good Bellman. wing it. That was good the way you handled <laughs> like, you that. Know that. Oh, you can stumbled, follow the stumbled, show stumbled. at Sportacast, yeah. which is the hub of the Sportico Media Network.